Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to do a little, uh, it's not quite a hay man job but it's a hay Uncle Lee job. Recently my uh, niece purchased a uh, riding lawnmower, her first new mower she's ever had. She got it with a bagger on her and quickly decided she didn't want the bagger. Contacted the people she bought it from and they said yes we'll take it back. So I went over to help her take it off, and as I was taking it off, uh, or as we were taking it off, noticed on the back that it had a place to hook a trailer to. Now, just prior to us taking that bagger off, uh, when she got the mower just a couple of days before that, we had to move her utility trailer out from under her shelter to have room to park the lawnmower. Utility trailer's not that big. I think it's about a five foot by six foot five foot wide, maybe six, seven foot long. Uh, but it was, it was just a little bit cumbersome to try to roll around in the yard. And as we were taking that bagger off, I mentioned, uh, I said, you know, if you ask your uh, favorite uncle on your mama's side uh, to make you a hitch for this, he'd probably do it. Of course, I got a little laugh out of that. And so it turned into a, a little job I'm gonna share with you today. Here's a picture of the back of the mower. As you can see toward the bottom of this picture, uh, the lip that's turned out. And again, the, the hole in this is only five-eighths of an inch. Uh, so even an inch and seven-eighths ball, which, which has a three-quarter inch uh, pin or shaft, will not fit in that. Plus the hole is up very tight to the frame. So we just, or I decided to uh, try to make her a step up. The second problem with the height was the height of that hole. It's only about 10 inches off the ground and really need to get up about oh another two and a half to three inches higher. So what I want to do today, I've been a piece of test metal. Uh, I want to make something similar to this. This part down here would bolt onto uh, the hole that's on the back of the mower. Got a step up here. This one's only about two inches. I did this as a test piece. It's only a, a one inch by a quarter inch thick piece. Uh, but we want to try to get about a two and a half inch or three inch step up here. And then an arm out here that will have a, a hole for the, uh, the ball to mount in. She asked me if I could, if I thought she could pull her camper with that too to move it out from under the shelter. And you know, I said, oh, sure, yeah, but the more I think of it, that camper tongue, uh, I suspect, is pretty heavy. So this is going to be just primarily to move her utility trailer around in the yard, in and out from under the shelter. And maybe one day she, uh, she'll talk her favorite uncle on the mama's side to uh, make a little trailer to pull a spray, a spray wagon trailer to pull behind it. If you recall several, I guess it's been over a year ago now, I had an old three plow bottom plow here on, uh, used once on the farm and I dismantled that for the metal in it. And I've used, I've done numerous projects using that metal. Well one of the pieces of the metal on that is this 3 8 inch by 3 8 by 2 and a half inch. This was a uh, brace arm. Now this is half of it. I've already cut it in half, but I'm going to do, give you a little slideshow right quick of what it took to get one end of this piece ready to make that, uh, that hitch for the mower. Of course, as my friend Harold over at uh, ARW says, all jobs or all projects start on the saw. And that was the case with this on, on the uh, vertical band saw. I uh, cut it off to length. You can see the, the chalk marks on there. Then I carried it over to the 2x72 belt grinder and rounded the corners off a little bit. After that, I put it in the uh, lay or in the mill and the hole that I wanted to make in this is a one inch hole. Now, I think she'll probably be using an inch and seven eighths ball on this, which has a three quarter inch shaft, uh, or three quarter inch pin. But I wanted to go ahead and put a one inch in this in case she ever does want to put a two inch ball on. 
So I use my one inch annular cutter and as you can see there's already a hole in this piece but that hole was punched it was somewhat oblong and again it was only about a, a five eighths hole might have been a three quarter I didn't even bother to measure it but I lined up the one inch annual, annual cutter over that hole and then cut it out with a one inch cutter. I'm really beginning to like these annual cutters. The workpiece itself that we're using this brace arm was, a, was designed on that plow to not bend and as you can see in this picture it had a crimp in it. Uh, it was crimped at probably about I don't know, seven or eight degrees to, to, give, to add some rigidity to it so it didn't bend. Well, I needed a flat piece because I do want to bend this. So I carried the piece over to the uh, forge, got it red hot, and then set it on the anvil and used a three pound hammer with my little flat, uh, flatter on it and got the piece flattened out pretty good. Uh, well good enough for this project. I then just laid it on the, uh, the cool dirt ground, bare ground, and let it cool slowly. I didn't want, I don't think there's any carbon at all in this piece. And I didn't want to heat it in a hurry and harden, harden it if there was any carbon in it. So I just let it lay there and cool. And that brought us to this point, uh, kind of before and after. What you're seeing here is one end of the workpiece versus our other piece. So what I have is a piece that I think we can work with. Now down here on this end where it's going to bolt on the uh, mower itself, I want to go ahead and drill that hole before I put the bins in this. So let's turn to the mill now. I'm going to use the annular cutter again uh, this time the, uh, the 5 8 annual cutter and cut out this hole. Over at the mill now and I've got the 5 8 uh, annual cutter in. I've got a point here laid out where I want the center of the hole to be. Now while I was measuring where that was in relation to uh, the back of the mower, it looked like about an inch and a half there but it was kind of hard to tell because the, the back of that mower panel is kind of rolled up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start here at the center. I've got the DRO marked and I'm going to move a quarter of an inch, 250 thousandths on each side of zero. And I'll bore a hole here. I'll move a quarter inch to the other side of zero. If there's any left in the center here, I'll get back in the center and cut it. But then after I, I make the holes with the annular cutter, I'm going to put a 5 8 inch end mill in and basically make a, a full slot in here that will give me a quarter inch play in either direction. So we've got uh, everything in slow speed. And I'm actually recording this annular cutter or I'm playing it back for you in real time. side of zero and do the same thing.
All right, I'm going to take that annular cutter out and put the 5 8 end mill in there. Then we'll come right back and turn that into a slot. All right, I've got the end mill in now, and I think I'm going to come down, I don't know, about, about a third. And let's start working our way over. Alright, that should have us a good clean slot now. I'm going to go back over to the workbench and lay out where I need the bins to be. One on one side and one on the other side. Then we'll meet over at the hydraulic press. Okay, I'm over at the 20 ton air over hydraulic press now. And it was a video again maybe a year and a half ago where I made this wedge with magnets in it to hold it up to the uh, uh, to the center on the press. I made this little cradle as a bending jig but as if you recall if you saw that video it didn't turn out too well. It bulged out. It didn't break any of my welds under there but it did bulge out in the middle and I knew I was going to have to do something different if I continued to try to bend metal here on the press. So I asked for suggestions and one of the viewers suggested putting a piece of round stock on each side, which is what I did. This is round stock here and here and a good solid weld, bead of weld there. So we're going to see how this works. I've bent, I bent that piece of quarter inch stuff that we use as a test on with this. All right, let's hope those magnets hold in place. Now I've marked this chalk line here and then one on the other side. Remember we want to bend from different directions so that we do a step up. Actually, what I'm going to do is run it down one time first to be sure this is lined up and everything's centered up. All right. We want to put about a 45 degree angle on this. Need just a little more bend. Just a little more. All 
All right. I hope you can see that. That's dead on 45 if my protractor is set correctly. It is. So now let's come over here and bend this other mark 45 as well. I can tell you this two and a half inch by by three inch or by three eighths is about all this press wants. All right, we've got quite a bit more bending to go. Oh, I'm sorry, we got we carried it too far. All right, I got I'm going to carry this out to the anvil. All right, see if I can flatten that back down some without heating it up. Okay, there's no not a really good way to hold that. The, on the anvil and and hit it like it needed to be hit. So I'm going to try flattening it back out a little bit uh, here on the press itself. Wow, I bet that a whole lot more than I intended to to begin with. She's getting close though. As a matter of fact, just one more little punch and that will be good. All right, that's a 45 there and a 45 here. So these these two planes should be parallel. Let's see how much of a lift I got. Okay, I'm turned over to the uh, uh, Powermatic drill press now. And let's see, if I hold that down, that's exactly three inches of lift. I was shooting for two and a half to three inches. That's dead on three inches. I think that's going to be good. All right, I'm going to wire wheel this, clean it up really good, uh, give it a coat of paint, and then meet you guys back over at the work. Okay, there's plenty of threads on there, so I'm not going to need a flat washer. Just can't really get a good grip on it right there, so let's try this. Alright, I think you'll see what I'm doing here. This vise has got soft aluminum jaws on it. I'm going to carry it over to the uh, to the Wilton, clamp it down good in that, which has got steel uh, jaws on it, and get that nut tight. Well, it turns out the threads on the uh, shaft were not quite long enough, so I wound up putting a walk, uh, lock washer on top and a lock washer on the bottom. and She's plenty tight now. She's secure. So the only thing we've got left to do is go mount it on the mower. Okay, we're over here at the back of this brand new Craftsman lawnmower. Let's take our hitch. Okay. A little bit of a uh, uh, clearance that I gave in this by cutting the slot in there seems to be just right. Okay. That 
that is bumped up. All right, this old man's got to get off his knees. Okay, that is bumped up to the uh, to the back plate here. Let me grab my tape measure right quick. Okay, I just went over and uh, measured the uh, tongue height on her little utility trailer with it setting setting about level. And the bottom of the hitch was at 16 inches, actually about 15 and a half. And this one is, the bottom of the ball is right at 15 inches. So the trailer will have just a little down tilt on it uh, when it's attached to that. But nowhere near as much as it would have if it was hooked down here. All right, I was going to record a quick little recap of this whole project. And I was going to do it sitting on the bottom rung of this ladder back here. You see this ladder? Well, it was a little further back under the shelter. And I decided I'd move it up closer and set on the bottom rung of it. And, and like I say, record a quick little recap. But after I set it down, I said, said to myself, you might better look under the rungs of this ladder and see if there's any uh, wasp or uh, wasp nest of any kind. And here's what I found under the, the paint shelf. Now this is about as big around as a baseball. Not quite as big as a softball, but it's at least as big as a baseball. And it was covered in yellow jackets. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with yellow jackets, but they have one of the most painful stings of any of the wasp family as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and in, on a day like today when I'm, I'm literally wet with sweat out here just a little time I've been here, uh, the uh, heat factor today is 99 degrees and it's about 11 o'clock, not quite 11 o'clock in the morning. One of those things would have been very painful uh, for me anyhow. I don't do well with stinking insects. But all that being said, I think we're done with this project. Uh, it's on the back now. Uh, I put a little weight with my foot on it and it will definitely hold the, uh, the utility trailer. But if she tries anything a whole lot heavier, I'm afraid it's going to take a little bit more bracing. We're not afraid. It just might take a little more bracing. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take care and I'll see you on the next one.